Today we're at R&R &R Detailing, run by Rob Barnard here, and we have an exceptionally special car lined up. Rob, what have we got? What are we going to be looking at without giving the game away too much? Um, a one-step polish uh, to remove as much defects as possible, um, mm -hmm. and um, best clarity and kind of go from there. Brilliant. So, what have you got? Well, gosh, that's pretty special. So I knew this car was coming, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's one of our reader car, belongs to somebody called Steve. Um, I know you can't see it right now, but what I'm seeing here is just more or less perfection uh, from a non-detailing point of view. Uh, but what we're going to do now is go and have a look at this beast close up and discuss what we're going to be spending today uh, doing with the machine polishes. What did I tell you? Here we have a Subaru BP5. It's an estate, it's an obsidian black, it's got the twin scroll two litre turbo, symmetrical four wheel drive, this is a beautiful car. However, I can see that some of the paint has, uh, well, not just the paint, but some of the aesthetics, should we say, of the car. I mean, at the end of the day, what is it, a 2003, 2004 car? Yeah. It's not in its first flush of youth, um, and there's an awful lot we can do. And the whole point of this article and this feature is about what you can do with a single step polish. But before we go anywhere near a machine, Rob has done the wash and decon. So, Rob, what did you do to get this car ready for polishing? So, yep, full, con full decontamination wash. Um using a um, variety of different products. Mm -hmm. um, I used a um, built hand bar snow foam. Yes. Um, I find that it does a really good pre-wash. Um, How long do you let that dwell for? Around about two or three minutes. Okay, too so it's long. quite quick acting. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And um, obviously in direct sunlight, I use um, a water purifier. Yeah. Stop water spotting. So what, the pure final rinse system? Or? Uh, no, I actually use a race clade, but we'll be getting one of them oh, because cool. I do like them a lot. Yeah. Um, then obviously onto um, iron removing fallout. Um, I tend to use a G-Technic one. Um, find that that gives me the best results. Gotcha. Um, Cycling back a little bit in terms of the two bucket wash. Three bucket. Three bucket. Three My bad. Bucket. My bad. What's what's the shampoo? So we've used the what was it called auto foam foam? I can't remember the, the pre wash. Yeah, auto foam from yeah, that's it. Yeah, and then as your main shampoo? As a main shampoo, I actually used um Gion Bath. 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 Yeah, bath. bath. And who knows? They put an E on the end of it, I'm not sure why. And in terms of your wash me, did you like a natural wool mitt or um I tend to use more muck fibre mitt mm -hmm. um, from Gion as well. Um I find that it washes perfectly fine. I do use Landwall's mitts, um, but not all the time. Gotcha. Um, obviously, start with the wheels yep. first, um, then move on to the bodywork, getting the vehicle wet washed and cleaned as possible, then obviously into the workshop for claying. Yeah. Um, I used a built handbar soft clay for that, because... Um, the, the paint's quite soft, isn't it's it? It's quite yeah. soft, and also it wasn't heavily contaminated. The, the gentleman's done a good job I don't think he used it that much, mm -hmm. and he's kept the bugs, the tar, the grease, everything off it. So it didn't take a lot. Um, unfortunately, it is the best car to single stage polish because it's in a bit of a bit, bit of, of a way. state. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, so we've deconned it with iron remover. We've done the clay bar removal. Yep. Um, so essentially, now this is naked paint. However. It's, it's, again, the marks in here. I can't see many in the way of RDSs, but we've got no. a lot of swirls, we've got some holograms, we've got various other problems. The bonnet seems to have some strange lacquer on the top of it. By the yeah, of it. unfortunately, after a couple of readings, um, I found out that that side has had some paint work done. So when he says readings, we're talking about paint depth gauge, uh, and those readings are for the depth of the uh, lacquer and the color coat. Um, but some of the readings were completely off the scale, which yeah. unfortunately suggests it's filler. Our friendly filler has been used um, on that side of the car. Admittedly, the paint actually looks slightly better on that side of the car in terms of some of the marks on it, but yeah. that's probably because it's rather newer than the rest of the car. Um, so the idea is, uh, as I say, we're going to hit it with single stage. Now, we've got a number of single stage polishes here, ignoring the panel white. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, first up, we've got Menzerna. Now, Menzerna has been around for a long time. It used to be the favourite of detailers. And yeah. their heavy cut is still more or less the go-to for everybody when it's yes. serious. And you need microfiber pad or wool pad, and their heavy cut can do an awful lot. Then we have, um, not quite the new kid on the block, but for the UK point of view, Kochami has only really been on the scene for, what, two, three, three years or about so? About that, yeah, about that. Um, H8 is their heavy cut, 
which a lot of guys like using. Um, this M2, though, is a, is a finer polish, and it's, again, a dimilish, diminishing, diminishing um, anti-hologram stuff, and that's, that's a good, nice, easy-to-use product. Very good polish, here. yeah, very good polish. Then we have a bit of a surprise here. I wasn't expecting to see Angel Wax. Now, Angel Wax is made up in Scotland. Um, they've got a chemist called John Hogg, who does all the clever stuff, and then they've got somebody called Matt, who is uh, essentially running the show. And I've seen this all over the social networks, but I've never actually heard anybody give me any feedback on it. And you were saying it's brilliant, weren't you? Yeah, really like it. Um, bought a few of their ranges um, and trying to get through using bits, and I was really amazed with that. Um, I think it's a really good one-step polish. I think it does a perfect job by removing certain amount of defects. Um, obviously, it's not going to remove everything. Um, but for a one-step polish, I think that is really up there at the minute. Yeah. Really up there. So you heard it here first. Angel Wax isn't just about QED that wins all the tests, and it's not just about their lovely waxes, such as Enigma. They also do compounds. Um, and then we get on to what you're using today, uh, which is Q2 Primer by Gion. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this product. Um, this is obviously their finishing stage. I I love Gion products. Um, I think they work really well. Um, this, as a single stage polish, is perfect um, for this. I did a test batch on this uh, a couple of weeks ago. It smells not too bad, doesn't no, it's, it? it's all right. I'm just um, trying to work out the solvents. In <laughs> and the best thing about this is that they, they say that you haven't got a panel wipe after. They say that, so you they're suggesting got, it's got no fillers in. That's it, so you haven't got a panel wipe. I mean, you can lay down, say, a ceramic coke, as on most, mm -hmm. um, straight on top of it. It actually removes everything, so there's no need for panel wiping. Well, it might be quite interesting, just to put it through its paces, because yeah. I know there'll be lots of people, there are lots of these one steps, and this is why we've got the panel wipe here, uh, which kind of rely slightly on having fillers. Now, all compounds, to an extent, will have fillers. They need them for the lubrication. There's always going to be oil in there. Um, but some of them actually encourage fillers because it gives a better visual effect. Mm. Uh, with this uh, product saying that you don't need to panel wipe, suggests that it can remove all of its own kind of solvents and stuff. It'll That's it, yeah. flare off. Um, but it'll be interesting using some panel wipe. We've got some G-Technic there, which is great stuff. A Brilliant. lot of people use it. Um, just to see if it really does uh, not leave anything at all on the paint. So we've looked through the polishes. Let's talk about some hardware. What we have here looks like a VRG by Flex. Yep. So this is a forced rotation device. You might have seen it in the last issue's mega test. Um, it's a great piece of kit. A Brilliant lot of guys swear by this. The one thing, of course, is it rotates in a different direction for some people. Um, but the number of guys who, I've, who I come across and they use these, they swear by them. They're good bits of kit. Um, What's well, 900 watts or so of yep. pure power? That's it. Um, so that is going to be doing the majority of the flat surfaces, I'm guessing. Yep, that's it. Um, and then down here we have, don't worry, I won't drop your baby. Um, we have a Roop 75. That's it. So this is a much smaller pad, as you can tell. So what size is that pad? That, Four inch or? That is, uh, yeah, four inch, yeah. Four inch pad. Um, and it's better at the intricate areas. And this is 400 watts, but it works in a slightly different way because this is essentially a DA. That's it. Um, yeah. So again, it's, it's tools for different sort of jobs. And I've noticed you've got um, masking tape, always good to see, protects the rubbers when you're polishing. Um, and tell me about this strange tool that you have. Right, so this, obviously, it's a brush for cleaning your pads. Gotcha. Happy, uh, clean pads are happy pad, always. Um, I didn't know pads had emotions myself. <laughs> But Rupes has um, made a, own a brush, but it's a pad remover. So you can literally pop it in there, put your pads off That's without remove, without, well, with the velcro at the, the back, yeah. Literally. Doing this by hand, I'll just show the camera. Doing this by hand, sometimes this backing can come off and the pads basically last less time. Um, using this to sandwich in is a smooth, easy way of doing it. Um, and it means your pads last longer. And it's a fun little tool, this. So yeah, <laughs> top tip. Get one of these, and this is called a, a Roop's Bigfoot something, I imagine. Pad, pad claw. Pad claw. Hence the Bigfoot. That all works, doesn't it? That's it. Cool. So Rob, we've done some playing around with the paint, and uh, now that we're close up and we've got some lights on it, we can see the problem here. Yeah, loads of hologram, loads of scroll marks, um, perfect paint really to do a polishing stage on. And this is caused by incorrect wash methods? Yeah, basically, yeah, that's where it's, con it's just bad washing, um, certain trips to certain places, unfortunately, causes this effect, but this we yeah. can, um, take it out the best we can. So we had our initial play, moving on to the next step. Using a Yellows Rupert's pad with okay. a Geon Primer. 
Mm -hmm. um, what we found is that it's done a brilliant job of removing a lot of defects. Yeah, you can see the difference between these two. Significant improvement. But it's where well, this paint's quite soft. Um, a lot of light white blooming, if you can see it, um, and it's the process is not leaving the, the paint as perfect as I like it to be for one stage. So I think mm. a switch up with a white pad, which is a bit softer, mm -hmm. um, and same compound, but go again and see if we can uh, refine them marks out a bit better and uh, better clarity, really. That's brilliant. So what we've been using so far is this yellow pad and what we're going to go to is this white pad and the white pad you can feel it's softer and the whole point of this is um, with a one stage, in the, well in the early days when you're using a compound, quite often if you're using a very aggressive compound, you'd actually dull the paintwork, you'd make it look visually worse before you made it look better. Um, the idea with a one step is you don't need to go through that refining step, so the whole key is with simply multiple passes but with one pad or compound combination you can take paint from this to better than that and that's the whole thing about being a detailer it's about playing around using your instinct using your knowledge using your experience of which pads compounds and paints work best together and when it doesn't work quite to your satisfaction the key is to be able to say right how can i improve it what should be the next move and obviously rob's got plenty of experience and he knew exactly what to do is right we need to soften the pad while other people might think oh we need to go to a different compound or we need to use a different machine it's not the case the pad has so much to do with the cut and the quality of finish um, that it's normally the first place to go to when you want to make an adjustment so what we're going to do now is have a go with the white pad and see how good we can get it over to you brilliant So, Rob, you've just gone over this with the white pad, and I have to admit, even from here, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, much better now. And then you can really see the fleck. This is uh, obsidian black. Obsidian is a black stone, it's volcanic. In the old days, they used to use it for making arrowheads and stuff. Um, but the nice thing, it's actually sort of semi-precious and that people use it for jewelry because of the kind of effects that you get from the magnesium, I think it is, and iron that's in, in it. And you can see here, although this probably doesn't have any obsidian in it, um, the different color flecks, we're getting lots of blues, lots of greens. It's a very attractive color, I think. Yeah, it's a lovely color. Which you'd be surprised on one of these. I mean, you don't think Subaru, great quality color. You think Subaru, best car in the world, full stop. Um, so, no, I think that's great. Shall we do the filler trick and just see if there are any fillers? Yeah, there? definitely. So the whole point of this is, uh, well, the whole thing about the Gion is that there are supposedly no fillers in it. So if we go over it, the panel wipe, which is essentially IPA along with a couple of other solvents designed to pull out any uh, fillers that you might have in there, any oils. Um, and if marks reappear, and we know they haven't been put in by the microfiber because we've moved the microfiber in a straight line, so we'll be able to identify that. Um, and then we know that Gion's claims about being fillerless are true in this case. Particularly with soft paint. Uh, it's very easy to put marks back in, so always check with your microfibers, use a soft microfiber, take the label off the microfiber, make sure the edging hasn't got any sharp bits in there, and always check you haven't got a bit of grit or something that's stuck in there. If you drop a microfiber on the ground, don't bin it, but use it for something else like engine bay or a dirty job um, where its cleanliness is not essential. For stuff like this, wiping down, and admittedly, you know, you could be going straight into a ceramic coat at this point, um, that's when you don't want to start putting new marks into the paint. Anyhow, I can smell the, uh, the solvents in the panel wipe and we've wiped it off, it's all flared off and if anything that paint is looking even better and I can't see any new marks. You'll find detailers spend a lot of time making strange grunty noises while they look closely at paint. It's just how they are really but they're really looking for faults and here we have a scan grip, is that a Gen 2? Yes, yes it is. So this is a new, new light by scan grip, we do a range of LEDs, this, this thing is here. Um, and they brought out a new generation, and this is the pen. Um, and the idea is it's full spectrum, so it gives a broad range of frequencies, because you know what it's like in a garage. Sometimes your car can look great. You wheel it out into sunshine, different frequency, different within the uh, visual spectrum, and all of a sudden you see marks that weren't there before. Well, the whole point of this is it shows everything at once. And I'd say that's a clean bill of health. I think it's good. 
as part of this video tour, we go around all these PBD members and we ask them what are their hot products, what are they like, what are they enjoying at the moment. Um, and this could be an old favourite. This could be like, for example, you're a big fan of the Menzerna Heavy Cut, um, or it could be a sort of a new cutting edge product. Um, and that's what we've got here. Brightmax um, is a PBD supporter, long term supporter, run by a chap called Matt Rook, really nice guy. Um, and he sent you three chunky bottles of various different products. Now, uh, the first one we've got here is something called Igneous Quartz. Uh, and this is a 7H, or is this the 9H? 9H. This is the 9H, so this is the hardest coating they do. Um, it's a kind of the creme de la creme. You'll be looking at, at uh, things like um, IGL Kenzo, that's probably a, a comparable. Yep. Uh, ceramic uh, Diamas is another yep. one. Um, and then the sort of top end Crystal Serum Black and stuff like that. So this is the market it's going into. Uh, it's the, probably one of the latest entrants into it, although there are quite a lot of new entrants in ceramics yep, nowadays. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then they've also got this Amacyst Quartz. I love these names. They're good, aren't they? Um, and uh, this is 7H, so this is kind of more of a mid-range. It's going to be a cheaper product, I would imagine, as a consequence. Uh, a little bit cheaper than here, yeah. Cheaper. yeah. And in really terms good of price, though. Really good price. Good price, both of them. Um, and in terms of application, you said this one, you were really, really impressed with the application. It was a little bit grabby. Yep, but he told me about that. Um, you just work around it, and I think, yeah, really impressed. Hydrophobicness is perfect for that. So, yeah, looking forward to do some more cars with that and find out how, how it's working. How durability. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of with these, it's about ease of application. It's about hydrophobicity, a.k.a. beading for normal people. Um, and uh, it's, of course, about durability. And then we've also got this Amacyst one. Um, and you've tried this as well? Uh, not at the moment, that one. Um, that one's oh, still, yeah, fresh bottle. still fresh. Lovely. I won't open it. <laughs> with these, incidentally, with ceramic coatings in the hole, they have lids that seal quite well, but once you've opened them, there's normally a bit of a shelf life to yeah. them, and they will start to crystallise around any areas that are exposed to oxygen. Um, and so this is more, kind of slightly more mainstream, so this will be going against, what, IGL Poly, kind of Crystal Serum Light, that sort of thing? Or? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Still, still a very good product, um, 7H hardener, so mm -hmm. it's a little bit less durability than that one, but still a very good product. Good. Looking forward to it. And when we talk about 7H, it's what we normally call the pencil scale, um, it's a contentious topic because there are lots of different ways of testing it and lots of different ways of doing it. So um, people will use words like diamond and, and diamond hardness, but it's a sort of slightly difficult one. We'll do an article on it at some point, I'm sure. Um, but the third product is what we have here, and it's why we're squatted in this slightly awkward position in front of this supercar. Um, did you get what I did then? Um, and what you'll see here is the plastic trim has kind of got a marbled effect. It hasn't, it's faded a bit, but it's not too bad in the fade department. But Blimey, this marbling effect is really odd. Um, and it's caused by oxidation of the plastic. So essentially the oils that are inside the kind of rubberized plastic uh, eventually degrade and move away. And that's what leads to this funny effect in the lighter color. Um, but you were gonna put on some of the subsidian quartz uh, and see how it worked. So with all of these trim treatments, you've got various different types. So you've got the kind of the silicon supermarket style ones, uh, which go on, they have a good instant effect, but they can actually cause long-term damage in some cases because they um, essentially dry out the plastic in the long term. Um, then you've got ones like this. This is probably comparable most to CarPro UK. They do something called Deluxe, which is very, very popular. Um, and that again is a sort of a, a kind of a semi basically a semi-permanent coating or a permanent coating for these plastics. So the idea is you wouldn't need to recoat these for at least a year, possibly two or three. Um, and I can see it's going on nice and consistently. Quite often they can be a bit patchy. Um, the key with this is obviously to get a nice even spread and also to do the areas that you can't initially see. So for example, there's going to be plastic underneath, there's plastic on the verticals. It's to make sure you get it all in. And it's being applied here just with a little suede cloth. Um, quite often they come with an applicator, but a suede cloth is quite good, very short twill on it. Um, and what we're finding here is it's definitely making a darkening. Um, the marble effect is still there. It might be worth doing a second coat in time, but with all of these, it's a matter of putting them on, waiting for them to go, and it's just where the solvents essentially vape off, um, and then you buff them again. Um, so how's this working? Not too bad. I think a set application would be good. Mm -hmm to just darken it up a little bit. This texture is really odd. I have to admit, I've never seen this, not even on a, on a, on a such a high grade car as this. Yeah. Um, but plastic is plastic and they will always do this. You'll often see it particularly along rub strips on trim. Um, but looking visually, it's definitely darkened it. Part of this is durability, which clearly we can't test here. Um, but what we'll do is put a second application on in a bit and we'll get some still images to see how it works. So Rob, we've used the coating here, we've buffed it off. And I have to admit, slightly disappointing, really. It's darkened it a bit, but we've still got the mottling effect. Yeah, um, 
really good product, use it on many other cars, um, but this kind of effect, it hasn't really changed it. No, um, yeah, I've got a couple of other products here that I use all the time for trim restoring, so maybe we give these a try. Yeah, so see if um, that see, helps. See, it helps. So the idea is we've, we've tried the Bright Max. Uh, it hasn't quite had the result. We suspect it's to do with the plastic. But just to be sure, what we're going to do is try two other products. So we've got uh, Gion, Gion, how would you pronounce it? Gion. Gion, for the record. Uh, Trim Q2. And we've also got an old favourite, which is G-Technic C4. Again, a lot of guys use this every day of the week. Um, so let's see how these have an effect. So uh, Rob's shown us the uh, Bright Max coating for the trim and uh, it didn't work very well. So we tried the G-Technic coating and that didn't work very well. And then we tried the Gion coating and that didn't work very well. So what we've decided to blame today is the grill itself. And on a supercar like this, um, you know, parts are actually reasonably accessible. So what we'd normally suggest is either you can dye the trim or you can just replace the part altogether. And when you've got a new one, you can coat it and then it won't go like that in the long term. So your turn is over. It's my turn to surprise you now with a product. Um, so I shall <coughs> whip it out. Valley Pro Beading Marvelous Wax. So I thought a nice wax would be good, given as we're correcting the car. Um, and I thought you could have a go. It's, we were sent this by Slims, in fact. Slims Detailing sent out a little yes. goodie bag now and then. Um, and it's a brilliant lovely wax and it works as far as i've used it um i found it really nice and easy to use but i'd love your opinion on this yeah, so definitely. i'll tell you what it comes with this applicator <laughs> i can still smell the wax uh it comes with this applicator um so do you want to have a go on the bit that we've machined yeah definitely great you might need that oh not again here we are, back at the polish panel. Uh, we're not going to be here all day, so we're going to leave Rob to do a lot of the uh, machine polishing while we go somewhere terribly important, the pub. Um, and um, I'm going to hand you this Beading Marvellous. And what we're going to do is apply it on the left-hand side of this door so that we can then compare it to an unwaxed area. Um, now, while Rob's doing that, one thing I want to talk about really is uh, sealants and waxes, uh, specifically ceramic sealants. A lot of people nowadays are moving over to ceramics and away from waxes. So you talk to any detailer of, of a certain vintage and they almost all started on waxes and they say, well, I use sealants now. You know, they, they last longer. Uh, in some cases, the gloss can be a lot better um, and they are slightly trendy as well. Um, however, there is something lovely about waxing car. Not only is it got a kind of a more touchy feely experience, but it's also much easier to get right with ceramic sealants, particularly if you're applying them at home, you're not a, a qualified detailer, um, you really can go quite wrong with them on the whole because you get high spots, you get all sorts of missed areas, it's, it's hard work. Whereas with the wax, it's easy on, easy off on the whole. There are some higher end waxes that are a bit more difficult, but then the results are usually worth it. Um, and this is a perfect case of wax. It's made by Valley Pro. They make a lot of stuff which Valleters use as sort of bread and butter cleaning products. Um, and then they do higher end. So the nice thing about waxes as well is they're quite affordable. Um, so this Valley Pro one, it costs 50 mil, I think it's about 9.99. And if you want 250 mil at present, it's about 34.99, which is a lot of money for a wax, some might say, but you'll be able to get a lot of applications. If you had a 250 mil, how many cars like this would you be able to do, do you reckon? Oh, you'll easily get about three or four, five possibly cars out of it. It's wax is about layering, so mm -hmm. you're um, don't put too much on at the beginning and then just keep building it up. I actually, I, I do miss a bit of waxing, so yeah, I think I might have to um, look a few wax cars in. Get back into it. Yeah. And this is the thing, is a lot of detailers do kind of reminisce about the waxing sides. Coatings are actually quite stressful when putting them on, because if you get them wrong, quite often it takes a lot to get them right again. Um, but with a wax, you get it wrong, you can just take it off and put it back on again. Um, but anyway, how did this go on? Yeah, really nice, really nice, really smooth application. Um, literally, let it um, break off a little bit, and yeah, look at that. And again, the optical qualities of a wax are slightly different from those uh, from a coating. So you'll find with a coating, quite often you get a kind of a cold clinical gloss. With a wax, it's a kind of more of a, a, a luster, I think people call it. Yeah, um, it a is. A deeper one. It is more of an oily look. The other nice thing about a wax, which you don't get it with a coating, is that if you've got some imperfections in the paint, I mean, this is obviously fairly good, but there are still some little RDSs here and there, um, then the wax will actually go some way to fill those. Whereas with a coating, sometimes you find it can even exaggerate paint defects. Um, so again, it's horses for courses. If you're at home, if you're doing it on your own car, um, I always suggest to start with a wax until you've built up experience before you go to a, a coating. Now here, should we wipe down that line and just see We've done the 50-50 just so you can see the difference. 
and this is where it's up to the skills of our cameraman Matthew um, as to whether he can pick up the difference. So I'm going to make a little squint at him to see whether that's worked. He's making funny faces, but he's built like that. Um, so what I can see, and I will describe it to you, um, is a much darker colour on the left-hand side. Um, and the gloss, if anything, I would say is certainly improved, but it's the nature of it has changed. And it's really difficult. This is like kind of almost like wine tasting, you know, when you get all these people going with, what's that taste like? And they say fruity and you say, well, mm, it's not particularly useful, is it? Um, but the other thing you can tell with a wax, and always do with the back of your hand, because the front of your hand has oils, you can just rub your finger over it like that. And you can feel the difference. So this is kind of grabby, whereas this is silky smooth. And that is also representative of the water behavior you're gonna get on this, because it's created this, this surface, uh, which is essentially harder for stuff to stick to. Um, so in terms of dirt and grot and stuff, it'll spray off easier. And in terms of water behavior, which we're gonna demonstrate shortly, if you spray on, you'll get beading. And after all, this wax is called beading. What's it called? Beading Marvelous. Beading Marvelous. Yeah. Beading Marvelous. Um, I apologize, there are so many different waxes, but Beading Marvelous is rather a good name as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is do some water testing on this one. In terms of durability, what would you expect out of this? Obviously, wax being a demissionable product, um, I reckon four or five, possibly six months. Okay, so quite um, a long time in the case of this wax. Some show waxes will only last for a couple of weeks and they focus on gloss. Some endurance waxes can go up to a year, reportedly. Um, and then you've got this kind of mid-range, this blend between looks and durability. Um, but anyway, let's get cracking with the water and see what happens. Well, Rob, thank you very much for having us here today. No problem. Uh, it's been a great time here. We've learned an awful lot. We've seen lots of interesting cars, obviously the supercar as well. Um, we're about to jump in our supercar, which is another Subaru Legacy, strange enough, Betty, um, and uh, hoon, hoon down the uh, M25 at very sensible limits. Um, but I believe you've got some polishing to do. Yes, time to get this on a ramp and finish it off. Great. Well, I can't wait to see the photos. No problems. It goes. Thank you very much. Take care. I hope you enjoyed part one, where we spent the day with Rob at r, r Detailing on that lovely Subaru Legacy GTB of Steve's. If you'd like to continue and watch part two, click here. And if you'd like to subscribe, click there.